Welcome back everyone, my name is Garvin and I review books and ramble about things on the internet. This is the first video of the year for me, so let me say I hope everyone had a great holiday season. If you're watching this in the future, well, I hope you had a good day. So today's video is a companion video to a book review, a non fiction history book entitled Empire of the Black Sea, The Rise and Fall of the Mithridatic World, because academic writers have decided they will not allow light novel writers to outdo them when it comes to title links. Now, there is a link to the full book review in the description below. I would say spoilers, but this history is literally older than Christianity, so I think I'm past the time limit. Yeah, I'm past the time limit. Let's do this. Let's be honest. There's something thrilling about the period where an empire falls. You would never want to live through it, but reading about it or watching it from a distance gives you that same feeling as watching a car crash, only on a much vaster scale. You're basically seeing the table flipped for a whole civilization and then there's everyone running around for whatever they can get a hold of. Maybe it feels that way because you're seeing the whole social hierarchy come crashing down and everything is now up for grabs. The guy who was a minor nobody could end up a king. The, a king could end up a beggar. Who knows? The period we're talking about is the fall of an empire on steroids. Because the start of this story takes place right after the death of Alexander the Great, who basically pulled down the Persian world order and died before he could replace it with anything else. This meant not only that the Macedonian Empire that his father had forged was up for grabs, but so was basically everything else except some colonies on the western edge of what people considered civilization back then. It's during this mad scramble when Alexander's family members, his generals, and everyone else who could get people to follow them were going all out to grab their piece of the biggest pie that had ever come up for grabs in this point in history that we start. Mithridates I, the founder of the Pontus Kingdom, got himself a small slice of that pie. As you can see, Pontus is the northwestern coast of modern-day Turkey, along the south shore of the Black Sea. This place has been a part of the Persian and Greek world for a long time. Greeks had started colonizing the place around 1000 BC along the coast. This is roughly 700 years before Alexander's life and death. The Greek writer and commander Xenophon would march through Pontus with the 10,000 in 400 BC. Even before then, Pontus had been a place in Greek myth and legend. They believed that the Argonauts adventured through there, that the Amazons had built cities, and that allies of Troy had mustered the armies that would battle Greek heroes on those plains. The Persians would incorporate it into their empire around 600 BC, so they had been ruling the place for at least 300 years when Alexander came in and tore their world apart like a whirlwind. The Mithridic dynasty, as I noted in the book review, was a minor power for most of their rule, but they ruled for centuries over a diverse and to our eyes strange collection of cities, tribes, and temple states. They did this by playing greater and lesser powers off each other through means of diplomacy, bribery, marriage, and, of course, war. They weren't the only ones doing this. Armenia shows up as a state in this period, or at least as a state named Armenia. Other states competed with them in Asia Minor and around the Black Sea. This book takes its time showing the rise of the Pontic state and the dynasty and the tools it used. 
which is good because often we focus on major states or the big empires in history so from time to time we need to step back look at the smaller powers and the tools that they use to advance their own interest it's interesting in of itself If I'm going to be honest, for all that in my mythology video, I prefer to focus on the Greeks pre-Alexander, I have to admit to a certain fascination with this time period as well, when the Hellenic world stretched from the eastern coast of Spain to the Indus River Valley, and it's a time of wild mixing of western and eastern ideas. There are empires, kingdoms, city-states, and tribal federations all competing and intermixing and creating strange new religions, ideologies, and entire ways of life. It's not a peaceful or a safe time, but it's an exciting one to read and study about. If you haven't looked into this time period, where it's after Alexander the Great, but before Rome shows up to utterly dominate the Mediterranean world, I do recommend taking a look because it is more diverse and in, any, and in many ways, stranger to the modern worldview than you would think. Of course, Rome does show up in this book, because it's the second half of the book that talks about the guy that actually made this particular small kingdom noteworthy in history, uh, Mithridates the Sixth, the Poison King. And it's the appearance of Rome into Asia Minor that brings this period of history into a new phase, one that's going to be determined by a pair of rising empire, the Romans in the west and the Parthians, also called the Persians, confusingly enough, in the east. Until both of these empires also fall, as all empires do sooner or later. I guess that's a sober thought to start the year, but, well, this was the book for it. If you'd like to know more, take a look in the links below. Uh, I'm going to link to at least one other book that covers this time period, Dividing the Spoils. I've reviewed that book in the past. It's a good book. I recommend it as well. That said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider leaving a like, a comment, or even subscribing, as that helps me in my struggle against the Dread Lord Algorithm. Terror be on his name. You can also join my Everwise patrons in the link below, where for a dollar a month, you'll have a voice and a vote on future projects. Speaking of patrons, special thanks to our biggest sponsor, Big Steve. As always, man, I appreciate your support. I will be back next week where I'm going to be doing a, a companion video to a science fiction book review, The Iron Dice. But until then, stay safe and keep reading.